Hello and welcome to the second episode of Catching Up with the Backs. My name is Nathan Cantor, the voice of the Salmon Arm Silverbacks. And as you can see today, we got two players, two more players joining us. On the upper left corner of your, of your Zoom chat, we have a new goaltender, Riley Kahonik, uh, who was uh, just acquired actually this offseason from the SJHL's Notre Dame Hounds. And also joining us, a new recruit on the bottom, we've got Lucas Matta who is uh, joining us. Uh, he recently played for the Lake Forest Academy in the U.S. Uh, Prep League. So thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So uh, let's just start off. Uh, we'll start with you, Riley. Um, tell us where you're joining us from and uh, what you've kind of been up to uh, the past couple weeks. What have you been doing uh, during COVID? Um, so I'm from White City, Saskatchewan. It's just outside Regina. Um, and I guess obviously with COVID, just kind of, going to work and then kind of work out, go on the ice while I can. And then um, now it's nicer out going to the lake when I can and get outside while I can while we have nice weather and that's pretty much it. Perfect. Uh, what about you, Lucas? Yeah, I'm from Kleinberg, Ontario. It's just outside of Toronto. Just kind of been trying to get on the ice, work out, see some of my buddies, golf, play some video games, you know. A <laughs> little, little bit of everything that you're allowed to do. <laughs> yeah, yes. just whatever we're allowed to do right now, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so uh, we're going to start now. We're going to dive right into the background. Uh, tell some fans about yourselves. We'll start with you again, uh, Riley, going back. Let's just start with, uh, I mean, you spent six years um, at the Notre Dame program, uh, which is not far from home for you. So let's just go all the way back, kind of. Um, why was that the program, I guess, that you chose? You not only junior, not only midget, you also played your Bantam AA hockey uh, with that program. So can you kind of talk about why Notre Dame uh, why you chose it in the first place? Um, just the reputation, you know, uh, I hear of like all the players that come out of there and um, just all the things that they have as far as like facility wise, like everything's all in one spot. So um, between that and then also um, having some mutual friends that work there, been through there to say nothing but great things. And so it's, it's close to home. So if I not don't have to get too homesick, so just kind of mm -hmm. blend of all those things, kind of just a, easy sell, I guess. And um, ever since I kind of went there after year one, I just kept on wanting to going, keep going. So um, just kind of kept going year after year, had nothing to complain about. So Perfect. Uh, can you talk about your TELUS Cup year, the TELUS Cup championship, which was your second year in midget? Uh, you played with two uh, silverbacks, one of them a former silverback, uh, Luke Millimock and Colson Wolford. Uh, so fans know them well. Can you just talk about what that year was like not only winning, of course, the Saskatchewan League, but winning a national championship. Um, yeah, no, obviously it was a lot of fun. You know, it's fun when you're doing well. Um, but even just like uh, all the guys on the team were, um, you know, super great guys. Everyone was serious when you came to the rink, but also, you know, had fun around um, when you needed it kind of thing. So, um, yeah, just we we're a super tight group and um, just great year all around, even besides winning TELUS, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Lucas, let's uh, get some background on you. Uh, you went to Lake Forest Academy uh, for two years. That's where you were coming yep. from. Can you talk about that decision to go to U.S. prep school? Obviously, you're living away from home. How did you and your parents kind of decide that was right for you? Yeah, for us, I mean, as a family, it was a big change moving far away from home at a young age. But I thought it was the best decision for me. And when I visited there, I met the coaches and met the guys. It was a pretty easy choice for me to want to go there. Um, what Are there some memories, something that stands out from your two years there? What are you going to remember most about your time? You know, definitely probably all the times. With the, like, I mean, you're living with everybody every day. You eat with them, you go to class with them, see them at the rink. So it's, you're kind of like together every single second. So it's a pretty different experience coming from like minor hockey where you're you know, you just see them at practice. You usually don't go to school with many of them. So it's a pretty big change, but it's great. I mean, I loved it. Awesome. Uh, back to you, Riley. Uh, ju the Junior A Hounds, um, we just talked briefly about midget, but is there anything that stands out? You played two years uh, in the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League. Any memories or any, anything that you want to talk about uh, from your two years with the Junior A Hounds? Um, I don't know, just little things, you know, a little different experience being in the uh, Junior A dorms with the guys, have a little bit more freedom. Um, so just like things like that. Um, and then just like the road trips, obviously it's kind of with every team, you know, you like the road trips, being on the bus with the, everyone and all that. But yeah, those are probably the, little, the things that would separate it kind of from going to school there versus junior. 
Now, going from midget AAA to junior A, you're a goaltender. How did things on the ice kind of change for you? Um, at first, I didn't really – I didn't think it was really um, the speed, I guess, that was the biggest jump, but mostly for as a goalie, I guess, um, difference in, speed, in the shots. Um, I know his shots were, like, a lot harder. Obviously, guys are a lot bigger, so a little bit harder to look around screens and stuff. But um, I found that the biggest change off the start. But kind of when you get used to it, it's obviously it gets easier, get used to it more. But yeah. Uh, so, Lucas, going from uh, year one to year two, I did notice, thanks to Elite Prospects, <laughs> it said you were named a, a Malloy Division All-Star this past year. Did you notice what was the difference for you from year one to year two transitioning? Did things kind of, some things get easier for you on the ice? How did things kind of change? Yeah, I mean, it's a different style of play in a way when you come from Canada to the U.S. I mean, it just seems the style of game is a little bit different. So my first year there, I mean, it might have been a little bit of an adjustment period. And then my second year, I was pretty comfortable. I mean, even just the switch of moving cities, like the whole environment change can be difficult at first. So I was more comfortable in my second year and definitely made everything a lot easier. Perfect. Um, Riley, now you, of course, were traded to the Salmon Arm Silverbacks. It was earlier this month. Um, do you remember what you first kind of thought when you found out you were traded? Do, do you want to share the story of how you found out? <laughs> um, I was pretty excited. Um, you know, change of scenery, like Lucas was saying, um, it's kind of something I felt like I kind of needed. And, um, you know, everyone makes fun of Sask where it's just nothing but grass and fields forever so <laughs> the, the mountains and stuff like that so um besides that and also just a different league you know different style of play versus sjhl versus dchl um so yeah i was super pumped i guess when i heard where i went and kind of stuff and couldn't be happier uh what do you know have you heard anything about the city of salmon arm like what do you know about it if there is anything you know about it <laughs> uh besides google all i know is it's a little small town right in the right near shoe swaps or whatever that's pretty much all i know <laughs> and you said uh the difference in leagues obviously um the sj has a reputation so does the bc league how do you think it might be different um i, I know it's sjhl there's um you know it's a lot of contact it's like a pretty tough league as far as players and stuff and um, I guess for a goalie's point of view I just noticed um, like lots of big guys especially like trying to get in front of that stuff so me not being the biggest goalie um, it was a little harder to look around big guys at the start but um, so I think it'll be a little different like BC obviously probably more passing plays and um, more yeah just more smart smarter plays and stuff like that versus you know grinding and Big, big bodies everywhere so okay uh touching up on that i know this is a question that people probably don't like to be asked but if you can kind of evaluate your strengths as a goaltender what do you think for you if you can describe your game what kind of goalie are you um i'd say i'm more a technical goalie i like to play the angles and stuff i don't like the um the big saves you know some people say like if someone makes a big save it's because they're out of position kind of thing so mm -hmm. um i like to play just play technical, keep it simple, stay calm kind of stuff. Um, just things like that, I guess. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, that works. Uh, so, Lucas, uh, it was not, of course, a trade that brought you to the Silverbacks. You uh, committed. Uh, why did you choose uh, the Salmon Arm Silverbacks? Yeah, I thought it was a great fit for me after meeting the coaches. And I, I had a chance to come out to the city in November and see it and see the rink and everything. And I loved it. So, it was a really easy choice for me to come here. <laughs> quick to the point yeah. love it uh yeah. how would you describe your type of game what what are fans what are they going to expect out of you or what should they expect <laughs> uh, i like to think i'm an offensive style d but i can make plays in the d zone too and i like to jump in the rush and try and contribute on both sides of the puck perfect um also noticed you have an ncaa commitment to northern michigan can you yeah. talk about how that kind of how that happened what was the process like yeah, I started talking to them throughout my season and kind of just fell into place and seemed like a really good fit as well for me. So, yeah, excited. Perfect. Uh, talking about excited, um, and we'll stick with you, Lucas, and then we'll go to Riley. What are you guys most excited about in your first season in the BCHL? Like, is there something particular that you're looking forward to or you're just looking forward to meeting the guys and getting on the ice? Is there anything in particular you're just waiting for for the season to start? 
yeah, definitely to get back back on the ice and start playing again after this long break. But I mean, other than that, just the increase in competition for me, obviously coming from prep, I'm, I know Riley's already played junior, but just the increase in competition for me would be uh, something I'm looking forward to for sure. Perfect. Riley, what are you most looking forward to? Uh, like you said, just meeting the guys, getting back on the ice. Um, I think that's the biggest kind of itch I have right now is just, um, you know, seeing what the town's like and what everything, what Salmon Arm is all about. So um, between that and then, yeah, just different league, just see how it compares to kind of what I'm used to and see, um, you know, the changes I have to make and all that. Perfect. Okay, so that was kind of the, the background and the hockey questions. Um, let's kind of transition a little bit to uh, pro sports. I'm assuming, are you guys both NHL fans? Is that a fair assumption? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so we'll start with you, Riley. How badly have you missed pro sports? And who are your teams that you follow, whether it's the NHL, whether it's other leagues? Who are your kind of your teams, your biggest fans? Um, biggest, I don't know, I only watched – uh, hockey and uh, kind of like basketball a bit. So like hockey wise, I like Montreal. Okay. Um, big Carey Price fan, obviously. And um, yeah, it sucks not being able to keep up with any sports in general, even if it was, you know, tennis or something I don't really watch or care about at all. Something to watch. Yeah. Um, and then I also a big fan of Milwaukee Bucks in the NBA. I like mm. uh, watching them, but otherwise that's kind of it. Yeah. Can, can I ask why the Bucks? Um, I don't know, for some reason, I just kind of enjoy watching basketball. I'm a big fan of uh, Giannis. Yeah. Uh, so that's pretty much why I like the Bucks. It's pretty much because of him. Okay, perfect. <laughs> uh, Lucas, who are, who are your go-to teams? <laughs> uh, I've always been a Blackhawks fan. My favorite player is Duncan Keith, so kind of grew up being a pretty big fan of them. But obviously, Toronto, support my hometown. <laughs> but uh yeah for hockey that's that that's my probably my two teams and then uh I kind of hopped on the Raptors bandwagon last year for sure and yeah they went on their run yeah um so if the Hawks played the Leafs in the cup final who are you cheering for well I'm probably gonna take the Hawks okay yeah. uh, do, do, do you kind of emulate your game a bit after Keith being how mobile he is yeah I've always tried I mean I think he has some pretty unique traits to his game that it's pretty hard to replicate, but yeah, I've definitely always tried to model my, my game after him for sure. And uh, Riley, what is it that you respect the most about Carey Price? Like, why do you look, why are you a big fan of his? Um, just kind of like, like I kind of said earlier, he's like a super calm goalie and uh, super technically you don't see him making all the diving saves stuff. He, he obviously like does it when he needs to, but um, just notice like how he's such a technical goalie and how he's super calm and stuff. I've just kind of always liked that. So. Okay. Uh, I want to get each of your thoughts on, if you have any, on the format. If there is the return to play, uh, I know a lot of fans are kind of trashing the 2014 playoff format. Um, what, we'll start with you, Riley. Um, I mean, the Habs weren't going to make it. Now they have a chance. <laughs> what do you think about the format? <laughs> um, I mean, I'm not complaining that Montreal has a chance, but I do think it's a little rigged or kind of <laughs> doesn't really make sense. But yeah. I mean, it's hot. I'll take it. It's better than, you know, right now not being able to watch anything, but I don't think it really should be like that at all. But <laughs> do you, um, how do you think it's going to happen? Like, are you pretty optimistic that there will be a playoff or is it kind of too hard to tell at this point? Uh, I, I'm not an expert. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair answer. <laughs> Lucas, what do you think about the format? <laughs> I mean, I'm the same. I kind of like it. Chicago gets in now too. So. I yeah. can't complain about that, but yeah, it's probably not the the most true to the the history of the playoffs that it's it's been in the past. So, I know some people might not like it, but I like it. It's kind of cool, especially to get something back to watch. Have either of you guys been watching any sports now? Like, I know there's been a lot of reruns of old hockey stuff. Um, there's been other sports, not as popular sports, but there's been some stuff on TSN and Sportsnet. Had you guys kind of been watching any sports at all during? COVID or not really? Because nothing is live. Whoever wants to go. <laughs> you can go ahead. <laughs> um, a bit, you know, um, just, yeah, a bit like this, you know, the highlights that TSN always plays or whatever, kind of watch those a bit always do, but um, definitely not, haven't been watching as much as I know, you know, I normally do, but a bit, I guess you could say. Okay. Lucas? 
yeah, I watched like the MMA, like the UFC stuff that's been on recently. It's probably, mm-hmm. I think the first uh, live stuff, some of like the German soccer that's been on once in a while, I'll throw that on, but that's about it. Yeah. Um, I just noticed you got an Iserman jersey behind you. Um, I did notice earlier, but I might as yeah. well ask you about it. Um, were you a Stevie Y fan when you were younger or why you got an Iserman jersey? <laughs> uh, probably more of my dad than me. This is okay. something that he, he had that he put up, yeah. <laughs> okay. So no yeah. personal attachment to Iserman? <laughs> no, not me personally, no. <laughs> okay. Um, are you guys ready for the quick rapid fire quarantine type questions? We'll go into that and uh, then we're just about out of time. Uh, let's start with you, Riley. Uh, what is your go-to number one favorite activity during COVID? What, what do you like to do more than anything? Uh, I'd say probably fishing right now, fishing or, uh, roller hockey. It's kind of the two. Roller hockey. Yeah. Okay. So in, uh, in Saskatchewan right now, when you guys are playing roller hockey, is there like a cap on like how many guys are you playing with? Uh, 12 guys. Okay, like, you, we're not hitting the calf. We're we're not that popular. <laughs> <laughs> but you you got it. It's not just a few guys fooling around. You got a game going. Oh yeah, we've got uh, like full dress goalies. I go player usually, but we got full dress oh, goalies. Okay. We bring nets. We nice. they sweep the uh, pavement like wait for an hour before kind of thing. Wow. So, yeah. So you play out what position? Uh. Every, rover i don't know (laughs) (laughs) everything (laughs) sweet uh lucas what's been your your go-to activity during uh, covid yeah recently it's been just playing on like getting back on the ice but definitely uh golf like to my free time some some of the guys and playing messing around you know so on that note skating uh where like i'm being in toronto myself (laughs) as well where are you skating (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah there's a few rinks around me that have opened up and my trainers just kind of skating with them small group stuff like five six guys okay the first yeah. time you were on the ice though when was that like three or so weeks ago probably okay and it had yeah. been how long since you had last skated probably like three months two months yeah so how did it start feel, how did it feel though <laughs> <laughs> i'm going because i was i was rollerblading like once in a while i'm playing roller hockey as well and they have like that front roll around them that the blades don't have so like you sometimes forget that it's there felt kind of weird at first for sure (laughs) sweet um okay back to you riley is there a show uh that you're binging now or is there the best show that you've binged during quarantine anything any show names you want to throw out there um i don't really i haven't really binge watched many shows um okay just kind of like movies and uh, like stand-up comedy kind of things that I've been watching on Netflix, but nothing really I've stuck to or anything at the moment. Do you have a go-to comedian or a go-to movie that you've really enjoyed during COVID? Uh, I like uh, Bill Burr. Okay. Oh, heard of him. Uh, he's yeah. a pretty good stand-up comedian, um, but that's pretty much it. Do you have a, a worst viewing experience, whether it's a show, a movie, or something that was just garbage that – was terrible <laughs> not that i can think of off the top of my head <laughs> okay fair answer uh yeah. we'll go to you lucas uh best show or best uh best show or movie that you've watched uh over the quarantine definitely the last dance i loved that that was awesome yeah and then uh favorite movie probably like Step Brothers. probably seen that like a hundred times yeah just on yeah. repeat <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah uh same question though anything bad anything terrible worst experience <laughs> well i can't think of anything specific that, that i have that strong of an opinion on right now <laughs> okay yeah. um riley video games have you been playing any xbox or ps4 um a bit i guess i don't know i uh maybe a little bit of like call of duty and stuff i don't play too much but okay on sometimes i guess because uh, i hear that among some of the players on the backs cod is a uh, it's a big game, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> you to practice up, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, Lucas, any any go-to video game for you? Yeah, probably like Call of Duty or NHL as well. Yeah, same thing. Easy to play with, yeah. Uh, Fortnite fans, either of you? No? Yeah, once in a while, yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, what about <laughs> – just shaking his head. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there uh, one thing that some players have been able to do, at least I know there's – there's a lot that we can't do, but home workouts have, of course, become a little more popular. Is, is there anything to, to keep in shape 
Riley, that you've been doing um, during COVID? Or do you have access to a normal gym? What, what have you kind of been doing to stay in shape? Um, the first couple of months, um, I got like got some weights and stuff and like a bull flex and stuff in the garage. So uh, I've been working out in the garage as best as I can. And then now the past, I'd say, I think it was two weeks ago, gyms have started to open up. So okay. I'm able to go to a normal gym now, which is nice. But um, before that, yeah, I was just kind of working out, doing what I can in the garage. Nice. Lucas, any, any home workouts <laughs> that you've been doing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I have like a squat rack and some weights in my basement, so I can get pretty decent workouts in at my house. It's not like they're not that much different to what I'd be doing at the gym. So I'm pretty lucky for that. Awesome. Uh, just a few more here. <laughs> uh, let's talk a little bit about food. Everyone loves, uh, they have their, you know, go-to junk food and that stuff. So Riley, any snack food in particular that uh, you have a lot of? <laughs> um, um, uh, Doritos, I guess, or uh, Miss Mickey's. Uh, I love chips. Um, but yeah, I guess those are kind of my favorite snacks. Slurpees, love Slurpees. <laughs> <What's>, <laughs> do, do you have a go-to chip flavor? Mm, I like salt and uh, vinegar. Or else um, barbecue. Barbecue. Nice. Uh, Lucas, go to snack food. Probably cookies or like chocolate, chocolate chip cookies or chocolate on itself, whatever. You got, you got <laughs> Anything, a sweet tooth. Any of that does. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what about, uh, Riley, back to you for, for takeout food? I know a lot of people during COVID, you know, they have their go to kind of takeout place, whether it's pizza or whatever. Uh, do you have a, a go to takeout restaurant or takeout type of food? Um, restaurant, I'd say probably like Earl's. I don't know if it's in BC or not, but uh, yeah. big fan of Earl's and uh, yeah. Little Caesars. Little Caesars Pizza, yeah, that's your go-to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lucas, go to takeout restaurant food. <laughs> oh, we've been trying some different stuff every once in a while, but like something quick, probably just like Tim's. We need a uh, cook snack or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Um, lastly, for for the quick the quick questions. When, let's say, um, when all restrictions are, listed, are lifted, and it might be a bit of time, but let's say they were next week, what would be the first non-hockey thing that you would do? What do you, essentially, what do you miss the most <laughs> that you wish you could do? Is there any activity that you would do in an instant if you could? You go ahead. <laughs> I'd probably see more of my friends. I mean, I have some, some of the guys from, like, my team last year that, live in different countries and stuff. So it'd be nice to get to see them for sure. Nice. Um, I'd probably say like same thing, seeing, you know, being able to see your friends and not have to worry about anything. Um, or else in Regina here, a uh, big thing is rider games. They're always packed and super fun. So that would be kind of nice to get back again, but. Nice. So you've been to, you've been to a few CFL games? Yeah. Oh, I was, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so quickly then just on that how like can you talk about the popularity of, of the cfl in like it's the whole province isn't it they just yeah. love the riders yeah no uh yeah riders are a super big hit here um every every game is right full and you see everyone wearing like watermelons on their heads and got the face paint everyone's got different costumes and stuff they wear and um you know they always do the thing like when the other team's trying to snap the ball they everyone yells as loud as they can so Everyone's super into it. It's super fun to be around. Awesome. Uh, that's it uh, for questions. Unless there's anything any of you want to add, I don't know, Riley um, or Lucas, if you have any closing comments about looking forward to the upcoming season, but um, that's it for me for questions. Do you have anything to add? <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us, guys. Uh, we'll see you in the fall, hopefully at training camp and hopefully uh, things are a little bit more back to normal. But again, thank you very much for joining us today on Catching Up with the Backs. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us.